Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings and we're going to be focusing on a specific type of artifact found in North America referred to as Jesuit rings. And a lot of these artifacts can be found in the region uh, once referred to as New France, a large portion of North America that was occupied by the French up until the 1700s. Now, these artifacts, what has drawn my attention to them is some of their history is obscured and I'm seeing some similar patterns with other artifacts I've looked at. So let's dig into these rings. Now, they're referred to as Jesuit rings largely because of a lot of the symbolism that's on the ring but they're usually found on these mid 17th to mid 18th century North American sites of French occupation or influence and a lot of them seem to be associated with these Jesuit missions particularly those established in the Great Lakes region and what actually kind of caught my attention right away is when looking into these little is known regarding the origin and function of these rings they may have been sacred objects which evolved gradually into more secular items there's speculation that they were used to trade with the native populations and there are more of these finds from Missouri and once again the exact origin of these rings is unknown they are referred to as Jesuit because of the religious motifs that are found on many of the rings but secular designs are also common and these are just some of the different designs that can be found on some of these rings and I believe these are from three sites in Missouri in these different counties yeah these rings are really interesting just because there's so much information that we're given from the Jesuits, but when it comes to actual artifacts that can be pulled out of the ground, in this case, there's a lot of intrigue behind them. And this is just one of these rings with the letter L and this heart on it. And I think this one was actually found at Jamestown, which is not quite New France, but interesting find nonetheless. Just some more depictions of these rings and they come in all sorts of different types and sizes but once again just another paper talking about how one of the more difficult things to see in the overall culture contact situation in New France is exactly what the rings were for and how they were used in interactions between native peoples and Frenchmen so there's a lot of guesswork when it comes to these rings and what exactly were they using them for, whether it was trade, status, just a lot of questions. And I think there was a relatively famous shipwreck off the coast of Texas, the uh, LaBelle shipwreck, and they found thousands of these brass finger rings in uh, 14 different designs. And again, just more of what are being referred to as Jesuit rings. And there's an interesting fort in southwestern Michigan, I believe, called Fort St. Joseph. And they also found some of these Jesuit rings, or at least one of them anyway. I think it's a heart-shaped ring. But as mentioned, here's where Fort St. Joseph is, and this is the state of Michigan. But what's interesting about this fort, again, what helps to make this site intriguing is that after this fort was ceded to the Americans following the War of 1812, the fort was left to the elements and was lost until the late 20th century. So again, we're given this narrative that the fort was just abandoned and left to the elements, only to be rediscovered in the 1900s. I think that the site is older, and the reason why it was lost is because there was this major destruction, in my opinion. In addition to these rings, there are some other interesting finds with murky histories and some of the specific artifacts that I'm talking about are what are referred to as Jews harps or jaw harps or mouth harps. They go by a few different names, but it's a musical instrument basically. And some of these were found at this Fort St. Joseph's in Michigan. But this particular musical instrument, which you would place in your mouth and it could make a few different sounds but it also has got a murky past but they're not just found in new france they can be found up and down the east coast as well from maine to florida throughout the 16 and 1700s but just at one site in michigan more than 120 have been recovered so these things were found in some places large numbers but they're not even sure how they got their name this is a site in northern michigan 
and apparently there's no particular relation to the Jewish people or Judaism. So there's a lot of questions about why they're even called Jews harps. But this is that one site in northern Michigan, and you can find many articles talking about the search for the origins of the Jews harp. And the person who wrote this article, he plays this instrument, and he was just talking about how the two most frequent questions he's asked are, how did it get its name and where does it come from? And apparently there's not a lot of good information. They believe they're coming from Asia originally, but it's up for debate. And I guess early writers simply did not think the instrument worthy of comment. So there's a lot of questions about did it get its name from a mistranslation when it was anglicized? Someone took liberties and that name stuck for a couple hundred years. But yeah, just one of the interesting questions surrounding these particular artifacts and just a couple articles talking about there's no indication that the origin was connected with Judaism or the Jewish people. And also we have no idea why it became known as the Jews harp, only that it remains the earliest name found to date. So again, yeah, there's another name that's used, probably it's more politically correct, called the Jaws Harp. And like I said, I've also heard Mouth Harp. But yeah, as far as dating goes, though, uh, it's only been since 2006 that there's been a comprehensive means of even classifying and dating these finds. So the study of this is, is ongoing and it's a lot more recent than we tend to think as far as the dating and uh, even the origin of these things. You know, there's still a lot of speculation. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. And I featured this ring earlier in the video that was found at Jamestown. And once again, James Fort was rediscovered in, I think, 1990s. It was thought to have been lost to the James River, but it was found, buried, and they found some interesting artifacts, but I think it got buried during this event. And also Charleston, historic Charleston that we see, it is built upon this walled city that can be exposed from time to time during these archeological digs. So I think this was the reason why all this stuff got buried is because of this event. And you can even apply this to Harvard University on the Northeast coast of United States. But when you look at the history of Harvard, you find out that it was established in the 1600s. So that would put it you know, during this early colonial period. And I tend to find a lot of these sites get buried. And sure enough, I found the same thing with Harvard. And when you look at the history of Harvard, you find references like this. While the university has accumulated a wealth of knowledge and artifacts, much of the history of the institution itself has been lost to time. And doing archaeological excavations in the college yard, they uncovered uh, some of these older structures that they believe date to the 1600s. One was called the Indian College Building, and it was established in 1655, and we're told it was just closed and torn down in 1693 due to insufficient enrollment. But they've found trenches that uh, were almost five feet below the current ground surface, and they find all sorts of bricks and they found roof tiles they found a lot of different artifacts including clay tobacco pipes and a lot of uh, interesting porcelain ceramics so just a lot of the same things that i'm seeing in a lot of these other buried sites and it seems to date to this early colonial period but i think the dating of everything is wrong like i don't think this event actually happened in our 1600s or 1700s i think it goes back a bit further but Again, that's just my opinion on it. So I just wanted to kind of touch on these rings and those musical instruments and this pattern. And it's something we can observe over and over again. So I thought I might just share it with you guys. And I think that's about all I got for you for today. So I'll leave it here, but I want to give a big shout out to my channel members. Thank you for all your help and support. Really appreciate that. And as well as my patrons, thank you as well for all of your help and support. It is also greatly appreciated, so thank you. So with that being said, until next time, take care. Bye.